So viewer has asked uh, the reception or the little bit of turmoil that uh, Prince William and Catherine saw in uh, Jamaica. Is that give does that give him a little bit of a perspective of how Harry feels? Uh, I guess with the press in the UK. So that's what the video will be about. I hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>
the base of this reading then is the seven of swords and the seven of swords is in a um, theft and betrayal okay so the base of this whole thing truth justice rules law that's what swords are and it's uh, based on betrayal and that's what William is basing his emotions on the betrayal of uh, Harry uh, the past of this reading is this uh, seven of wands and the seven of wands is typically uh, depicted in the a typical Rider Waite deck as someone up on a, a mountaintop or a cliff with one wand fending off a bunch of other issues a bunch of other ones poking up from the bottom and so um, the past of this has been defending yourself about against all these uh, issues these plans and that's where William has been the sky of this reading then with the six of cups is remembering how things were in the past remembering when things were good this is looking better and better. And then the likely outcome of the first part of this is um, this 10 of wands, which is a heavy load to move forward. This is a big bundle. It's hard for that crow to get it going, to get all these plans, all these actions moving forward. That's the, the likely outcome of the first part of this. And we'll go back and read it again in a minute. But let's get the last four cards to tell the story. After that Jamaica situation, has that made things a little bit clearer for William about what uh, Harry and Meghan uh, feel? Uh, uh, in the United Kingdom. The self of that question is, is five, six, seven, eight of uh, wands, lots of things coming at you at the same time. And uh, so perhaps there's been some realization there of that. The um, environment that that's in is this three of coins. Okay, so the three of coins is working together for public for something of public display. Okay, so the all these plans, all these issues are in the environment of working together. So perhaps this is a, a work in progress. The hopes and the fears for that, right here, temperance, finding a balance. This is an emotional uh, uh, balance that needs to be met. And then the likely outcome for all of this is right here, making a decision. Truth, justice, rules, law. Take making a choice, and that choice will move a thing forward. You have to blind yourself to the distractions and just deal with the truths, the justice of what's going on. So we'll read it through it again. Did William have uh, an enlightening moment uh, regard in that Jamaica uh, debacle, all those protests? Well, the, the signifier of the whole thing was secrets being revealed. Maybe that was the thing, the secrets that struck uh, into his head. And it's in the environment of the Empress, loving, nurturing. So yeah, all of that is what's inside of William. He loves his brother. The uh, base of this reading then with this um, seven of swords is an, is abuse and and um, betrayal and uh, and so that's a very powerful uh, thing to start from and that's a shame but it looks like it's starting to melt and then in the past of this reading we had the six of wands uh, really having to defend yourself against all these issues that are coming up because Harry's um, what we consider as betrayal set up a whole lot of issues for William to have to deal with. Uh, whether we see it or not. And in the sky of this reading with the Six of Cups is just remembering how things were in the past when it was a simpler time, when things were better, there was abundance. Yeah, let's get back to that. Uh, probably he's thinking, or why did we have to get out of that? And then and why couldn't Harry just continue to suffer? Um, and, and, but the uh, likely outcome of the first part is that this, all these issues are hard to move forward. They can be, but it's hard. And then the um, self of that very question with this Eight of Wands is that there's so many issues to clear up. And then the... Um, uh, environment that it's in is working together with these three of pentacles for something of value to display to the public, not just personally. And then in the hopes and fears, we have temperance. Let's find that balance. Can we find that balance? And then the final outcome is that, yeah, the choice will be made. Uh, and it has to do with truth and justice. If he didn't, he will. I just wonder about William and Catherine and their perspective on Harry and Meghan. I guess it's just all has to be that the monarchy is what is important, and I don't think Harry feels that way. Let me know what you think. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this is the Crow Tarot by M.J. Cullinan. I suppose that's how that's pronounced. And uh, they come in a really nice, sturdy box. Um, if you got this as a gift, you feel like, you know, that was a nice gift. The uh, guidebook is pretty interesting. Uh, it has uh, good uh, suggestions on how to use these cards for divination. And then right in the back here, it talks about 
the artist and the author of Crow Tarot. And it just says that Margot Jones, so that is MJ in the MJ Cullinan, is a Seattle-based artist, writer, mother, and lover of all things magical, especially Crow. She attended Parsons School of Design, yet her unique te uh, technique of telling stories through digital collage is self-taught and has been her passion for over 10 years. And I don't know that's as of when. Um, nature and its creatures are a familiar theme in MJ's work. However, having grown up in the south of Boston, her collages are heavily influenced by the energy of the city. Her work often merges the two worlds. Her path into the world of tarot was a beautiful accident that came out of a difficult time in her life. The process of creating Crow Tarot helped her rediscover her own wings, though at the time she didn't realize how life-changing the project would become. She simply fell in love with the process, the messages, and the feeling uh, each card revoked. The Crow Tarot, MJ's first published deck, has achieved a significant following and recognition with Crow lovers and the tarot community. When MJ is not making art or writing for her Crow Tarot blog, Hmm. She's spending time with her daughter River, playing in nature, practicing magic, and finding new sources of inspiration. So I love that, to don't know a little bit about the artist. And uh, like I say, the descriptions here are useful in the divination, especially when so much thought has gone into the cards. The, the cards themselves are just really amazing, and I love using these cards a lot. They've got a sort of a, an antique uh, kind of patina to the cards. I mean, it's not really a patina because it's fake. But you can see how each card has a little wornness about it that kind of makes them uh, fun to use. And they're beautiful cards. And, you know, what, the reason I do this is for those folks who don't get to see uh, full decks of tarot cards very often. At least this way you get a little preview of some of these cards. And uh, it's a nice way to uh, shuffle up the cards without damaging them. I like to keep my cards in good shape as long as I can. And um, so that is... The Crow Tarot. Well, I'm Mark. This has been My Journey Through Tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.